Welcome to the top 20 cards in sports collecting history. In this four part series, I will be going over the 20 greatest sports cards of all time depicted by the book, The Diamondbacks Collection, 50 of the greatest cards in sports collecting history, written by Tom Zappala and Alan Zappala with John Mallory. In this video, I will only cover the top 20 cards, but the other 30 cards in this book will be covered in future videos. As a disclaimer, the cards in this list are not ranked based off of monetary value but based on the perception of greatness in the hobby of sports card collecting. However, the cards in this list can carry a high price tag. This is part two of our journey. Number 15, 1955 tops Roberto Clemente, card number 164. Statistically, Roberto Clemente stacks up with the best players of his generation. The Pittsburgh Pirates right fielder could do it all, from his hitting prowess to his cannon-like arm. Clemente would earn four National League batting titles and 12 gold gloves in his career, along with two championships in 1960 and 1961. From a skill set standpoint, Clemente checked all the boxes. Clemente's appeal, however, goes far beyond base hits and outfield assists. He was a cultural icon and a hero to people from all walks of life. Clemente's stellar on-field performance was overshadowed by the kind of man he was. Simply put, statues of athletes are erected because of individuals like Clemente. The 1955 top set is home to several key cards from the likes of Jackie Robinson, who led the Brooklyn Dodgers to a championship that year, to a second-year issue of Hank Aaron, to a trio of great rookie cards in Harmon Killebrew, Sandy Koufax, and of course, Clemente. The Clemente card in particular, which is part of the High Number series, has always been considered one of the tougher cards to obtain in high grade from the 206-piece set. You can certainly see the difference in difficulty between the three key rookie cards by pursuing their existing populations by grade. Finding well-centered copies is one of the bigger challenges for collectors, but the Clemente card also appears to exist in significantly fewer numbers overall compared to the Koufax rookie. At the time of this writing, over 50% of more Koufax cards were submitted to PSA for grading versus those featuring the Pittsburgh Immortal. Number 14, 1954 Wilson Franks' Ted Williams. Throughout the years, the majority of collector attention has gone towards the mainstream trading card issues. These are the brands that most hobbyists are familiar with. In the 1950s, the two big brands that dominated the scene in baseball were Topps and Bowman. Topps ultimately took over the market in 1956 after purchasing Bowman and eliminating their lone national competitor. During that time, however, some of the most desirable regional sets were created and the demand for them defies the general collecting rule. One such card is the 1954 Wilson Franks Ted Williams. In fact, one could argue that the card is the most important regional issue ever produced. The Williams card, which is the key to the 20 card set, offers a combination of extreme difficulty with tremendous eye appeal due to the attractive design. The majority of the known copies were included with the package of hot dogs, which explains why so many of them are found in rough condition today. That said, a few hundred uncirculated Wilson Franks cards entered the market in the 1980s. As a result, some high-grade copies exist for an issue that had to contend with so many natural packaging pitfalls. Number 13, 1911 T205 Gold Border Ty Cobb. When you stop and think about all the awe-inspiring cards that Ty Cobb is connected to, it makes you wonder if any other name in the hobby comes close. From an early appearance in the majestic 1902 to 1911 Sporting Life Cabinets W600 set to the unique 1933 Gaudi Sport Kings issue, Cobb was a fixture in many of the best releases during the pre-World War II era. One of the Cobb cards that rose to the top of that vast list is his 1911 T205 Gold Border. It's an issue that elicits adulation and frustration at the same time, so much so that some collectors choose to avoid the challenge altogether, no matter how deep their pockets might be. The set had a hard act to follow after the success of the T206, but the American Tobacco Company came through with this stunning creation. The set, which contains anywhere from around 208 cards to roughly 221 cards, depending on whether we account for a number of errors and variations, was the first to include statistics on the back of each card. It is also one of the most condition-sensitive issues ever released. It is certainly much smaller than the contemporary 524-card T206 issue, but it is still one of the larger sets of the time and it provides a superior challenge for any collector seeking to assemble one in mid to high grade condition. The same ornate design that enhances its beauty operates as the set's Achilles heel. The lavish border that surrounds each card are exceedingly fragile. Wear is revealed with the slightest touch or chip. It is nowhere to hide. From an aesthetic standpoint, the contrast between the white paper underneath and the dark borders can accentuate 
the negative impact on eye appeal. Number 12. 1941 play ball Joe DiMaggio card number 71. In a set filled with the biggest names of the day, the 1941 play ball Joe DiMaggio remains its most coveted card. That year, DiMaggio found himself in a summer-long fight for hitting supremacy with his friendly rival in Boston, Ted Williams. It wasn't the kind of competition where two players were vying for the exact same batting average or home run title. It was a battle of unworldly performances. Williams hit an uncanny 406 for the season while DiMaggio compiled a 56-game hitting streak. The question for fans at the time was, which one of these feats was more extraordinary? The 72-card play ball set was the third installment during a three-year run for the brand. From a set builder's view, while it is clearly smaller in terms of card count versus its two predecessors, it is most aesthetically pleasing and desirable of the three play ball releases. The injection of color into the 1941 design separates it from the previous 1939 and 1940 sets. The DiMaggio in particular, which is basically a colorized version of his 1940 play ball card, has a beautiful look. The legendary center fielder is shown finishing the classic swing against a trio of distinct colors, from bright yellow at the base to the lime green just above the deep purple that dominates the middle and upper half. It is all surrounded by a thin layer of rich blue that helps frame the image inside the light colored borders. Number 11, 1948-1949 Leaf Satchel Page card number 8. In a set defined by its historical importance, star power, and difficulty, the 1948-1949 Leaf Satchel Page card still stands as its most critical piece. Yes, the issue is home to a number of significant cards, including the iconic Jackie Robinson rookie. But the Page card is the one component that causes collectors the most trouble from a scarcity and financial standpoint. For said builders of any grade quality, securing a Page card is the single acquisition that puts them in a reasonable position to complete the entire project. With time, effort, and money, it becomes an attainable goal. But Page is the priority one. Major League Baseball fans were only able to get a small sample of Page's mound magic when he was well beyond his peak, but it was just enough to imagine what he must have been like in his prime. One of the key reasons for its rarity is the fact that Page card is one of 49 short prints in the 98 card set, which is oddly skip numbered. To put this in proper context, there are approximately 10 times more Leaf Robinson cards graded in the PSA population report than there are a page, in addition to the card being printed in lower numbers versus the regular cards. No page had been graded higher than a PSA near mint mint 8 at the time of this writing, making it one of the few stars in the set without an example graded near mint to mint 8.5, mint 9, or gem mint 10 to date. Poor centering, print quality, registration, and varying degrees of border toning are all conditioned obstacles associated with the page card. Thank you for joining me in discussing the top 20 cards in sports collecting history. Leave your thoughts below in the comment section. I'd love to hear what you think about the cards we covered in this video. Please like the video if you enjoyed it and also consider subscribing to the channel if you're new or haven't considered subscribing. I'll see you in the next one.